I'm Bruce Apar, and you're watching Frank Talks with Bruce the Blog. <laughs> so I to do that on the spread. So you're inspiring me, Daisy, to be improvisational. That is so... Hudson Valley is reopening Woo and I am thrilled and so honored and grateful to be one of the opening acts on June 9th with the Daisy Joplin Band, my fabulous band and this time we're going to collaborate with the Westchester Putnam Youth Symphony. They've commissioned Tristan Schulze, a fabulous contemporary composer, to write a piece 45 minutes long for them and my band. It has rock and roll, jazz, blues, Irish folk music, tango, classical, and a lighting design by the internationally renowned Kendall Smith. It's going to be an amazing night. I have some surprise guests in the first half of the show. Come and celebrate with us. Well, now at least you know why I was making like Jack Benny. <laughs> I wouldn't be making like Daisy Joplin because there's only one Daisy Joplin. She's inimitable. <laughs> Thank uh, God. <laughs> that's right. No, no, that, that's a great thing. Frank Talks with Bruce the Blog is brought to you by the Penny Saver and our parent company, Chase Media Group. And we always thank our CEO, Carla Chase, and my co-host, Frank J. Rich, for putting us up. Frank cannot be here, uh, and we welcome him back when he can be here. <laughs> uh, and Frank Talks with Bruce the Blog is a weekly community affairs show where we bring you interesting personalities, uh, artists, uh, community leaders uh, who have something really significant to contribute uh, and that we want to make sure you know about. And if you have somebody you want to recommend, or maybe it's even you, you can email me at bapar at chasemediagroup.com. And also, if you're not watching us on YouTube, you can catch all of our past shows, and that's two years worth now, because we started in June of 2011, uh, and go to YouTube and search for TownLink TV, and oh, the shows will come up and you can watch them on demand. So welcome Daisy Joplin, the one and only Daisy Joplin. Great to Joplin. be here. Right. Um, <laughs> and well, a lot of people already know who you are, and even those maybe who don't got a taste of who you are and what you do with that, with that video clip, Daisy. And of course, you know, the big news not only for you, but for everybody in this region, is that the Paramount is back, right? Fantastic. And you're, so you're going to be opening? You're literally opening the new Paramount, isn't so that So right? it's not exactly that. Well, you're the first performer. There's a fundraiser for right. the Sisters of Greymoor a right. few days before. So I think we're one of the first really public acts. And they're going to have some oh, big opening splash. That's a private event? Yeah. I don't know. I just don't oh. know how you get tickets or where exactly. Oh, okay. I don't know. Um, but anyway, we're at the second concert. Which okay. is fantastic. And they're going to have some official big opening splash later on. I don't know when. Right. But the guys are great. Red House Entertainment. Ray Wilson is the new... Um, Which is the new company that yeah. will be operating, the Paramount, yeah. uh, under a contract from the city of Peekskill. Absolutely. Right. Just yeah. signed the lease Monday this week. Right, yeah. Right. So, so it's, it's, it's really, really uh, new and fresh and juicy. Breaking news. Yeah. That's right, as we call it. Breaking news. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, the symphony that you'll be performing with, yet Westchester... Putnam Youth, Youth Symphony. Symphony. Got it. Uh, you played with them before? No. Yeah. Oh, this is first. This is a first. Yes. And and what will you be playing with them? So there's this fabulous piece. I noticed yeah. I said there was fabulous a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. Let me just say okay. again. Right. Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Worked for the Beatles, the Fab Four. Come on. And now the Fab Foe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> who who have played many times at the Paramount. Yes, and I'm sure they'll be back. Yeah. 
Yeah. They're a big staple I here. Know, but I know. I've seen them, I think, every time. Have yeah. you? Yeah. I actually never made it yet. My yeah. husband went. But um, I love the Beatles, so I'll be there at some point. But right. anyway, moving to something new and That's never right. written before. <laughs> I mean, actually, already written but never performed before. Okay. Is um, a 45-minute concerto. Right. Um, the composer is a really incredible composer living in Austria right now because I lived there for 13 years wow. and played in a band um, most of the music was written by this guy he's called Tristan Schulze right. and he writes for the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra like he writes for orchestras around the world for musicians around the world he's he's his music is definitely some of my favorite music being written right now kind of within the orchestral realm you know right symphonic um, or, yeah, yeah symphonic sure, yeah. I adore it, and I'm so, so thrilled um, to have this piece written by him for me, especially for me and my band. So it's for violin, rock band, right. and orchestra. Wow. And, you know, there's some really special things about it. One is... So the youth symphony is the orchestral yes. component, right? Yeah. Yes. And then your band and, and your violin are the other components. Yes. Right. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's really unusual in that it has, it kind of starts off in a kind of classical way. I mean, maybe right. more film music-y, right. but it has sections of tango, Irish folk music, rock and roll, blues. And then right at the end, all the orchestra takes percussion instruments and does this cool Latin groove. Oh, wow. And then ends in this big, you know, hoo-ha. So, so did you, you collaborate with him on like the composition of the piece, what you were just describing? You told them what you would like, and, and then he goes and executes it. Right? Well, actually, yeah. the orchestra did, which was really cool, because oh. one of the really important things is to give kids a chance right. to be playing on this great stage, playing with fabulous musicians, and playing a piece which is really, really fun and hip and cool. And new and original, which is and really written, exciting. Yeah. And written especially for them. So in October last year, the orchestra paid for Tristan to come from Austria to New York to meet the orchestra, to kind of try ideas with oh, really? them. Wow. Yes. And for them to kind of tell him what they would love in the piece. And actually the orchestra conductor, I haven't heard them yet playing this piece. We're gonna do it on June the third, it's the first rehearsal oh, together. Wow. Wow. Um, but the orchestra conductor and founder, Cheryl Havens, okay. who's absolutely amazing and being amazing to work with, joy to work with. Um, she said the kids are just thrilled that it's this piece sure with the things that they've asked for, and it's like, what a gift. And how many pieces are, are in the orchestra? Then? 60. Might be Six? 58, but 58 wow. to 60. Oh, so yeah. that's a full orchestra. It's a there. full orchestra. And, and how, do the, uh, how do these young people become members? They have to audition to be... To you know, the exact process, I yeah. don't know. Right. I didn't ask Cheryl. Right. I would say it's a mixture of auditioning, being recommended, okay. you know, what instruments does she need? I mean, there might right. be 50 flutes, but only three places for flutes, you know, so she's probably got to do a mixture of just finding the best people from the area. And, and they come from, well, obviously, by, by the name of the group, they come from Westchester and Putnam counties, yeah. but I guess from all over from in, the, all in that over region. From those in the region. regions, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, and they're great kids, you know, and it's, it's just, it's going to be thrilling. And we've got a lighting design also. Right by a local guy, oh. but internationally renowned, Ken Smith, Kendall okay. Smith, right. who's done, I mean, he's, his resume is extraordinary. He's done stuff around the world with like Metropolitan Opera, etc. I mean, big, right. big, big shows. Wow. So we're really excited so to it's a have big, him. So it's a big production on June 9th at the Paramount. Yes. Right? And there was information on screen, uh, I think it was brownpapertickets.com that you yep. go to, to to buy tickets to the show. Yes. Yeah. Now you, you started, by the way, when you were describing the uh, sequence of the piece and how the different, you know, movements were going to, you know, be introduced, and which is very symphonic. But you know what I thought about was, of course, I've known you as long as you've lived here, uh, which is three, three years, years. Now, yeah, and I've seen you perform. And part of your performing style is you like to sneak up on people, Daisy, <laughs> don't you? Right? I love and that, that, and that's what makes you seriously. That's what makes you such an exciting performer and people love to to watch as well as listen to you perform right so I just love the theatrical side of it right um, which is very I, obvious when you're on stage yeah the, and I love the I love creating something people literally were like I never expected that I didn't know right. whoa that you know I love them being on the edge of right. their seat right um, well what I think you know uh, 
almost by uh, default, one of your signature pieces seems to have become, uh, well, I think, well, Teenage Wasteland, The Who. Yes. Because when I talk to people who've seen you, that's the one that they always seem to pick out, you know, saying, I can't believe this woman got up with a violin and played Teenage Wasteland. That sounded great. They don't expect it, just what right. you're saying. Right. It's, it's the unexpected, yes. right, that is part of what you love about performing I love it. And, and the audience reaction. And, yes. Yeah. And you performed all over the world, literally. Yes. You just came back from Norway, right? Yes. Because I remember I ran into to your handsome husband, Joe Brown, at an event, and he got up at a gate, Hudson Valley Gateway Chamber of Commerce breakfast and said, Daisy's in Norway, and was talking about your upcoming performances. Right. And, uh, do audiences differ a lot around the world, or, or are they, do they all tend to be the same no matter where they are? Actually, they do differ. Yeah. Um, and especially because I play a wide range of repertoire. So I played in oh. Austria last year in a right. beautiful festival on a stage on a lake. All the audience sits wow. at the edge of the lake and watches the stage and the sun setting over the oh, lake. Anyway, that's gorgeous. so I get to go to amazing places. I'm really, really blessed. Anyway, we're there and I did my kind of normal New York program, right. which means I do the modern arrangements of classical, like a reggae arrangement of Vivaldi, which everybody knows and loves, <laughs> right. you know, moving through my own um, compositions, uh, moving through world music, tango, right. gypsy violin, right. and ending with rock and roll. Right. So I'm going through the concert, the people are going crazy, they're loving it. And then for the last song, for me, the icing on the cake, I take up my electric violin and I play Teenage Wasteland from the uh, Okay. And they kind of love it, you know, we get a standing ovation, everything's great. But at the end of the show, I always have my CD signing, meet the audience, you know, and people are all coming up saying, well, what was that what, song? What was oh, that? why <laughs> did you play? You know, your violin sounds so great. Why did you get out the electric violin? Like they didn't really like it. Didn't really get know it. Know the song and didn't get it. Right. Oh. So I was like, okay, <laughs> We're not doing that <laughs> next time we go to Austria. Right. I mean, maybe in a different kind of way, but it was so interesting. It was so different than what you just described, which is playing in New York, where people are like, she's this amazing violinist. Right. We love it. Right. We don't know any of the songs, but we're enjoying it anyway right. because of the way she presents it and because of the arrangement she's doing and because she's having so much fun on stage and we've got the lighting and the theatrical and blah, blah, blah. But then she played The Who, which we know and love every note of, which is a different connection. Here. It's a song. Yeah. Here, right. So right. that's how people react. But then it was totally right. different. They that's knew all the classical music I was playing. Right. Everybody right. knows without it in Austria. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So it was really interesting. But you so, know, there's a famous, a very famous, uh, maybe the most famous comedy routine, uh, you know, very American, uh, by, by uh, this comedy duo, Abbott and Costello. I don't know if you remember called Who's On First that I've actually performed um, right. recently with the hand-to-mouth players. And what you were just describing with people coming up to you sounds almost like the Who's On First routine down to the fact that Who is part of uh, uh, of the story here where you said people in Vienna were... It's almost like my what I was envisioning is they come up to you and say, Who are you playing? And you go, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's, 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 that's exactly. You know, so. if I had been you, I would have <laughs> you, you exactly know, been like, that, right? of course I was playing. Yeah. Who? <laughs> right. <I'm> like, what? <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad you recognized it. Yeah. Right. Unfortunately, they were speaking German because I speak German. Oh, so okay. Well, wouldn't well, have well, worked. Well. But uh, next time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Something would be lost in, trans in right. translation, I guess. Yeah. But you uh, know, I have to mention quickly. Yeah. Bruce, tomorrow. Okay. I don't know if anybody's going to mention. What, well, you know, do it, this it may not be today. tomorrow, depending when people are watching. Right, it, but, Saturday. Uh, it may be in the past. Yeah, yeah it might yeah, be in right. the past. Right, but that's you okay. Know, Let's I say, uh, say that May 11th. Yeah, May 11th. You will or did perform. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, in Arsening. Yes, in a beautiful garden, basically. Where else you want to play? No, that's beautiful great. Garden. Yeah. And this weather. I mean, I just, I did just come back from Norway, and I left Norway. It must have been about two weeks ago now. I left Norway. At six degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, wow. And I basically got on my plane, had a nice plane ride, got off it into this, and right, just literally right. was like, I mean, I've loved living in Peekskill the whole time I've been here, but now yeah. I fell deeply in love with living in Peekskill. Yeah. I was just like, I'm in heaven. And talking of being in heaven in a garden, there's this wonderful guy, Michael Vaquin, who owns a beautiful residence in Ossining okay. with woods and all kinds of stuff, a lake, you know, these beautiful rambling gardens and massive flowers and, right. you know, blooming trees and it's just totally gorgeous. And we're doing a kind of awareness raising event uh, tomorrow, 2 to 4 p.m. Right. Um, or, or, where or did. 
Yeah, or did, <laughs> Again, with I'm all just, these kids I'm playing. I'm bracket the yeah, uh, time just, warp here. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Where five groups of kids are going to play at different right. areas throughout the gardens and the woods, and there'll be refreshments, and we're going to have a big cake. And um, oh, if, if you have... If you, the date has not gone by, come along <laughs> come to this right, event. Come see it, right, <laughs> right. And, and you also love to, uh, as you said with the Westchester Putnam Youth Center, yeah. you love to work with, with young people, and you give right, workshops, and yeah. you teach, and you've gone to the schools, including the Peak School, right, school yes. System. Yes. Right. Um, so, so where does that come from? I mean, in other words, when you were young and somebody was teaching you, right. And, right, so you were on the other side of it, and it sounds like you really want to give back. I do. And teach young people. And it did just happen. It's been right. three years now. In a way. Well, since right. March 19th was my first concert in Paramount. Right. And just before that was the first time, you know, I um, started working with kids. So it's two things. One is, yes, I've had this incredible life. Right. Incredible life. It's been like a fairy tale. Right. And it's because I've had this great training as a child to play an instrument. Right. Um, and I think playing an instrument as a child helps not only if you want to become a professional musician, but just helps all round personality. It's a way of oh, expressing. Absolutely. It's right. the therapy. I mean, it's my yes. therapy. It's most musicians' therapy, you know. Right. It's a beautiful, fun, amazing, even training your mathematical mind thing to do. Discipline, everything. Right. You've got the whole pa package in there. So um, when I came to New York after living in Vienna for 13 years, mm. where every child has the opportunity to play an instrument, and in Vienna, one in two children plays a musical instrument. I was going to say, you're saying in Vienna, every child has the opportunity to play an instrument. I would think they, that's their birthright. <laughs> right? like exactly. In, like playing hockey, ice hockey in Canada. Right, right. exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I came to New York and noticed that's not the case. And especially like this change that's happening where a lot of cuts are happening to music programs in schools right now. Yes, yeah, unfortunately. I just, yeah. yeah, I just, my heart just went out and I was like, is there anything I can do about this? So first, ah, so okay. what I've been doing for the last couple of years is giving kids the opportunity to play in my concerts, which has been so rewarding for yeah, me. That, yeah. And for the audience. And yeah. for the and audience. For the audience, right. And for the kids, yeah. you know, and they, they all just say, this was the best night of my life. And, you know, it's, it's the most thrilling and beautiful thing. Right. That's the first thing. And then secondly, I've been talking about it for years and I'm kind of gradually getting closer to starting a music program in Beacon, only oh. because the director, Donna Mickelson, who's the director of my program, right. she lives there. Yeah, and, and Beacon is a great arts community. Yes. And, and becoming more and more prominent. Yes, yeah. and we really want to do it here also. It's just right. that we kind of had everything in place to do it there. Yeah. So January next year, we're going to start there with somewhere between 30 to 60 kids. Oh, wow. Yeah, 50% of the program is fee free, sorry, <laughs> 50%. <laughs> okay. They kids play, but it's like minimum, you know. Right. So we were going through the whole fundraising process. It's just something which takes really time because you don't want to say, oh, great, I've got the money for kids to learn an instrument for a year. I mean, we're saying we've got the money for these kids to learn an instrument for 10 years. Really? That's what we have to be able to give them. So you want to start the structure. You want to start you're, everything. And you're saying it is funded for that long? It's it's fun. So we're getting the money now together. For 10 years. Yeah, that's and it will start in January right. of next year for that's 10 great. years wow. for those kids. And we want to, you know, we want to build it up so that it's enough for whoever wants to learn. Right. But yeah, kind of have to start somewhere. And um, we, we, anyway, it's, it's going to be fabulous. And right. I'm really, really happy about that. Uh, something I wanted to, to ask you, Daisy, you know, I, I dabble in community theater acting and when you're on the stage, you have lines to say, so that's what you're focused on. Yeah. When you're on the stage playing the violin, I mean, you're not singing or you don't have lines to say. Right. What, what is going through your mind? Uh, is it the, the piece that you're playing? Is it something else? Uh, what am I going to have for dinner tonight? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's, you know, that's an honest answer. <laughs> the, the, I would say if I'm you know, achieving my goal, then most of the time, which I do a lot of the time, most of the time, the whole great thing about performing and about playing music is the fact that you let go of absolutely everything. Okay, okay. You let oh, go. That's very you let go of any yeah. kind of idea you right. have of right. anything. Which, by the way, I'm taking an acting class now, yeah. Axial Theatre in Pleasantville, and they teach what's called the Meisner Method, Sanford Meisner. I've heard about that. There was a very famous acting teacher, a contemporary of Stella Adler right. and Lee Strasberg. And his method is, is gospel, and we're learning the, the Meisner method. And it's just what you say. Uh, uh, our instructor, Rachel Jones, who is great, uh, let, she says, let go. Let go. Don't, tr don't force it. Don't try it. Just let go. So it's the same in terms of your performance. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's the kind of thing that every musician is, 
I would say about, I can't speak right. for all of them. Right. But <clears throat> there's a part of us, there's a part of all of us humans, which is the same in each one of us. Right. Which is that kind of spirit. Right, yes, absolutely. You know, which is where right. all inspiration comes from, right. which is the unmanifested the, the God, well, whatever you want to call it. What's the root word of music? Muse, right? Yes. It's your muse. Absolutely. It's, it's an actor's muse, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I feel when I'm performing, and this is why I love to perform, that I'm <clears throat> letting go of everything. Right. Being in that place of just being. Right. But, uh, and right. then touching all of the, all the people right. to also be in that place. So we're in it together. So we share. I mean, I, people say to me, what's your best concert ever? I mean, I can't help but to say when I played twice for 30,000 people, of course, anyway, you get on the stage right. and you don't do anything. You just walk on and they're screaming and it's like, oh, right. Right. great. Yeah. And then you play and then you're there with this amount of people all experiencing that, in a way, freedom. But, but do Together, you, so, you know. so when you're hearing 30,000 <clears throat> people clamoring, does that add to the pressure? Does it make you more nervous? Is it, is, it must be a great adrenaline pump. Right? It was a yeah, great certainly. adrenaline right. pump. Yeah. I pro did I feel nervous? Well, I probably, guess if you have to think about it, probably not. Right? It's the same kind of thing of like letting go to everything right, right. and enjoying it. And I really really enjoyed it. Well, you're in the zone, right? Yeah. yeah. But but I want to I want to point out that um, and Howard Meyer, who's the head of Axial Theater, who does a great job, he, they're putting on a production right now of his original play called Radiance. Um, you know, as he says, it, you can only let go if you are totally prepared, right? Absolutely. You have to be totally prepared. You yes. have to know your work backwards, forwards, inside out. And then when you get on stage, you can let go yes. and everything comes through you, right? Yes. Is that, yeah. All right. And then of course, if you're improvising, it's like you have a language, you know, right yes. now we're right. improvising, but we know the language of just our English language. Right. Syntax, but when you're improvising yeah. right. as a singer or, or on an instrument, you know. Right, like scat singing you or have jazz singing. Yeah, right. a language. Right, yeah. So that, yes, it's totally spontaneous, but it's, using right. you're, uh, the well, language as, that you've again, learned uh, on your instrument. As my teacher, Richard Jones, said, uh, the, what they refer to as your instrument, yeah. which is a Meisner term. It's, it's your instrument. Yes. Well, when I'm saying instrument and acting, your instrument is your acting Yes. and your ability to, p to perform. Absolutely. Let's talk about, uh, Daisy, your, your new CD. Yes. The, the Healer Within. Right. right. So, you know, this, this whole thing of, it was kind of interesting coming to New York. I have to say, uh, I, f I had this group for 13 years in Vienna. Right. And, and that was Triology? Yeah, right. Triology, right. which was a also just wonderful, wonderful experience. But we did decide to go our separate ways and right. do kind of, we just wanted to do different things. Right. Um, at that point, I started getting all this work in New York. Like, I literally met Shaka Khan. She's like, you know, I want you to come on tour with me. And Rick I was like, Shaka Khan. oh wow. my God. Well, I couldn't do it because I kind of still had all this work with Triology. But right. all these things, opportunities were coming up and I actually turned them down for a year because I, I mean, the touring, not, I could have done that, but all the things that meant I'd need to live and be in New York, because I just thought it's so far away. It's just like, what a move. <laughs> but the, it just kept coming. And finally I was like, let me just try this out. Right. And I took a plane over, landed, arrived in New York City. And, and that was your went. first time in New York? No, I would played it? here. Yeah. Oh, you had performed You know, here, I right. performed probably five times or something, okay. you know. Right. Um, you know, Carnegie Hall, I did, you know. So. Oh, is that all? Just Carnegie <laughs> Hall? <That's> all. <laughs> Knitting factories, some few clubs. Nothing like starting at the top. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably the first place I well, played you know, when I came Well, you know here. the, the old, very old vaudeville joke about Carnegie Hall? Well, I don't know, the practice, How do you get practice. to Carnegie Hall? Yeah, practice, practice, practice. practice. Right. But um, anyway, so I arrived in New York and, and really felt like I'm coming home. I mean, I felt amazing. It was the right time, sure, right place. Yeah. So many people feel that. You fall in love with New York. And right. I thought, right, I'm yeah. going to stay. Okay. <clears throat> What am I going to do? I mean, I played in lots of people's bands, but that actually wasn't enough for me. Even right. if they were amazing artists, I wanted to do my own thing. So sure. after a couple of years, I'm like, what am I going to do? And because this homecoming feeling was in New York for me, just emotionally, I decided to go back to my roots of playing classical music, which I hadn't done. I hadn't actually played classical music. I played in a string trio, but we wrote our own music. For maybe 15 years, quite a long time. Wow. Uh, so I decided to go back to classical, but because I'd spent 15 years 
creating my own music and improvising and playing all these amazing different styles and grooving and I just couldn't go back and sit down and just play that note for note right. as it was written 200 years ago because oh. I'm now I'm living now and ah, this is okay. you know <laughs> so I had to be me and I had to say okay I'm gonna create my roots but right. right as I'm feeling it right now right and I decided to form a band which took a little bit of time to find the right musicians and now I found <laughs> these beautiful musicians right. and this is our first album yeah, you should point to where... This is our first <laughs> album, <laughs> right. you know, I think, I think you've right. seen the photo yeah. already. Right. And um, it's called The Healer Within, really because of that thing I'm just talking to you about, you right. know, I mean, I, I, we have one beautiful poem on here. Yeah, and no, I, well, I've listened to the CD yeah. several times, and it, it's also a nice mix of, of different styles. So I decided for my first album to have a mixture, basically, of classical and world. Right. But, you know, the next one's going to be coming along and we'll have rock and roll, maybe more. It's, there's still a rock feeling in some of the songs. Yeah. But, um, so this is really exciting. And, uh, and then how can somebody uh, get a hold of the CD? Come uh, to the concerts right now. Okay, okay. You, you know, just concert. go to my sure. website right. and kind of keep updated as to where. I haven't put it online yet. Right. DaisyJopling.com yeah. is the website. Yeah. And of right. obviously June 9th. We're going to have T-shirts, posters, right, sure. right, the whole right, thing. Right. Come and get the album. Right. And um, right. this the will Daisy be... The Daisy Joplin experience. Yeah. With a tip of the hat to Jimi Hendrix. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. But also, I, I don't want to uh, miss the opportunity before we have to leave uh, to talk about what I wasn't aware of, uh, and that's your Hollywood work, as it were. Yeah. Right? Uh, a lot of people watching this, I'm sure, will recognize the film title Spanglish which was a, a popular comedy, right. a domestic comedy. And um, The Road to El Dorado, which was that DreamWorks? Uh, yes. Uh, you know, one of, one of the animated uh, DreamWorks feature films. Right. And what was your role in those two films? So this trio, yeah. trilogy, right. uh, we played a show one night where Hans Zimmer heard us. Right, the, the famous film composer, Hans Zimmer. The famous yeah. film composer. Yeah, right. And he was like, guys, can you come to Hollywood tomorrow? Right. <laughs> we were like, well, we're on tour. But we actually had a couple of days opening, like 10 days later. And uh, we went, he was working on Spanglish, and we ended up recording. No, we, sorry, we did Road to El Dorado first. Right. We ended up arranging and recording the whole score. With Hans About Zimmer. 40 minutes With of music. Zimmer. So he would bring us a line, I mean, a melody, a couple of chords, even a drum rhythm, and right. we would write everything on top of it and record it. And um, we had d great experience being there. Um, and by the way, the, because we do have to start to, to wrap it up, but. Um, you know, I know a little bit from having worked in the in the Hollywood industry on the publishing side. Mm -hmm. uh, it, the whole process of how films are scored is really fascinating, right? And what I'm saying is, you're watching, you're on the you know on the sound stage or whatever, and right. you're watching the film, and that's when the, yes. the orchestra is playing, obviously. Uh, in sync with the action on screen. That's yeah. absolutely true. That's yeah. how the orchestra does it. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, know. we yeah. kind of did it slightly differently in that we were given certain cues and told this is the, you know, this is what we were watching. Right. A couple of times we improvised to the picture. Right, okay. Oh, you did improvise. And yeah, then right. in the studio right. they would kind of do stuff with it. Right, right. So. Um, but most of it, it was like, this is the cue, in other words, this is the couple of minutes that you're going right. to be doing, this is the basic thing, and then we wrote an arrangement, we played that arrangement and recorded it. But we right. did, we went to like, you right. know, um, the Beatles studio in London and recorded stuff. And what, it was Abbey Road exciting. Studio? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And we did other stuff in LA, I think. I think right. Anyway. No, so yeah, so, and uh, we do have to wrap it up, Daisy, but it's always great fun. Thank seeing you, you whether, so whether we're much. on camera or not. Right? <laughs> um, and we want to remind everybody, like, the, the big event June coming 9th. up is, right, June 9th. Come and celebrate the opening. It's the so great. At the newly reopened opening. Paramount, which is cause for celebration yeah. in itself. And then especially if Daisy's going to be on, on stage. So thanks again. And uh, thank, thank you, you for watching. Frank talks thank with you. Bruce the Blog. Remember when Bruce the Blog <laughs>